We're going to look at a story now, at a parable. And this parable shows us a situation where a person did not respond well. And we want to try to avoid this sort of uh, behavior. Okay? I'd like to uh, invite my friend Carol to come up and she's going to read. So open your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. We're going to read from verses 21 to verse 35. And um, I'll give you a moment to find the text. Matthew 18 verse 21 to 35. For those of you who don't know Carol, she's new here. Say hello, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, all right. Here we go, Carol. We're going to read from verse 21 to 35, and then we'll have a prayer after that. Um, this is the New King James Version. Right. Okay. Um, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that they had and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his servant was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Let's pray. Father, we have come before you this morning um, with a heart willing to worship you and give you gratitude for the amazing gift of salvation and the blessings that we receive throughout the week. We want to thank you for the Sabbath and we thank you for bringing together in the community of church. And as we open the Bible together and we've read this text, we pray that your Holy Spirit will open our eyes and help us see what we need to see. Perhaps something we have, may have not realized about our own lives so that we can, we can may better comprehend your heart, your love, so that we may learn to love like you love. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Okay. So, I believe you have heard this uh, parable before. And when you think of debts, you can also consider debts of emotional hurting. Have you ever been hurt? I believe everybody has. Maybe you have been hurt by somebody else. Maybe you hurt yourself. Or maybe you have hurt someone else. How do we deal with all this hurting? This story of the unforgiving servant is quite, I find it intriguing. I find it curious, the, 
the twists in the story. But this is also a story that reveals to us um, some great insight about emotional and spiritual healing. And that's what I'd like to bring to you today. In this story, we have a king. The king is settling his account. And he, find, oh, he finds this account of a servant who owns a lot of money. You see, the masters back then used to give their, put, entrust their money to servants so the servants would invest them wisely. And this servant was not wise. On the contrary, he wasted the money. How much money did he own the king? Does anyone know? The Bible says how much? How much? 10,000 talents. But what's 10,000 talents? Okay, so we've got to think of another story that Jesus told. Do you remember that parable where the master gave a talent, some talents to some servants according to their um, abilities? And when he came back, he asked them what they had done with their talents. Okay, one talent of gold is equal to 34 kilos of, kilograms of gold. Which, in current value, would be about $1.8 million. One talent of gold. $1.8 million. Now, how much does this servant in our story owe to the king? How much? 10,000 talents. So how much is that? Quick calculation. Yep. So that's 300. It's about 340 kilograms of gold. 1,000 kilograms of gold, which is 18 billion dollars. Why would a master entrust a servant with 18 billion dollars? But I think Jesus is giving this amount, this this crazy amount of this crazy debt to show to us what it's like, how much a person owes to the Heavenly Father, at an amount that is impossible to repay. That's a lot of money for, to entrust just one person. And the master, he looked at the situation, and, the, and the, he, he called the servant. The servant said, oh, I can't pay it. And the master realized, yep, you can't pay it. So the most viable option here is we're going to have to sell you. We're going to have to sell your, your family. We're going to sell, have to sell everything you own. Now, if he was planning to sell everything he owned, that possibly means that all the $18 billion, you know where it went? <laughs> to the servant's own household. So the, serv the king is like, okay, let's sell it all. I might repossess some of the money that you've taken. But we find the servant crying out, Oh no, king, be patient with me. Be patient and I'll pay back everything. Look, he's saying he's going to pay back everything. Well, if you think about it, it's impossible for him to pay back everything. Did you know that if, even if he worked every single day of his life as a servant, do you know how long it would take him to pay back his, um, his doubt, debt? 200,000 years <laughs> at his salary, at 200,000 years, given that the life expectancy is only 60 years. Impossibility. And so, the servant was still asking, begging, for the master to be patient because he would pay back everything. And uh, he was actually asking for a special kind of mercy. What kind of mercy? This is the word that appears in this text. A makrothumason, which is a Greek word that whenever it appears in the New Testament, it means give me an extension of time. So he's uh, saying, Lord, please delay Please be patient and I will pay you back everything. Give me more time. That's what he's asking for. Give me more time. This is the servant's idea of forgiveness. He thinks forgiveness is you got to settle it. You got to do something about it and you got to have time to do it. 
He thinks, and he's deceiving himself, that he can mend it. He can pay for it. But the Lord's idea is different. The master's idea is different. The master looks, looks at the situation. He realizes that the servant will never be able to pay it back. Even if everything is sold, even if he's in, the, in prison, he will never be able to pay it back. He sees the he sees the, the servant suffering at his feet. And the master does, the master takes this, does something really shocking. The Bible says, he took pity on him, he canceled the debt, and he let him go. How much did he cancel? How much? 18 billion do you realize what that is like? Say, okay, you don't have to pay me back $18 billion. <laughs> that's, some, that's more than some countries, I think. $18 billion. The servant's account was cleared. And it appears that he doesn't even lose his job. He doesn't lose his family. The master doesn't even sell his possessions. He keeps everything. He is a free man. But the same servant, as he went out, he saw a fellow servant, a co-worker, who owned him $20. And the Bible says that he grabbed that co-worker by the neck and told him, give me back my money. I need the money. And the servant said, but I, but I can't. He, he, he gave the, the, the servant the same, the same plead for mercy. Oh, please give me more time, Akra to Manson. Give me more time and I'll pay you back. I can't pay you now. Nope. The servant was unforgiving. Had no mercy on him. Put him into prison until he paid his debt. Which, by the way, how can you pay your debt if you're in prison? No mercy on the side of this servant. What a rush, harsh response. And this shows to us that this man completely misunderstood. He could not understand how much grace, how much, what the size of his debt was to his master and how much grace he received from his master. He missed the point. Well, the other servants saw, um, saw this happening, heard about this happening, and they were like, our master is a good man. Our king is a good man. He is just. This is so wrong. We got to tell the king. And they went and told the king. And when the king found out, the king was outraged. He told them, bring the servant back to me. But, but it's, you know what's interesting? When you read the story, even then... He gave the servant a, a chance to explain himself, doesn't he? Check in your Bibles. He asked the servant, why did you do this? I mean, the king had all rights to just slay this guy. Because you, you check with some other parables. There are parables where the masters cut the, services, the servant into pieces. But right here, the master's like, Why? Why did you not show the same mercy to others that I sh showed you? And the, the servant gave no response. What was, going, his, was, what was he going to say? He could have said sorry, right, boys? No, not even a sorry. So the, the king said, oh, it looks like you want to be arrested. So you're going to be sent to prison. You're going to be tortured until you pay what you need to pay. But you still look at the heart of the father, the master. He doesn't throw the family into prison. He doesn't sell the family. He doesn't even sell the family's possession. And he doesn't even give the servant the harshest punishment that the law required. It's just interesting. That just tells you something about the master. But the servant, oh, he wrote his own sentence. He rejected the pardon. 
And my guess that even in prison, he still did not understand the depth of his debt. Christ wants you to understand, my friend, the depth, the depth of your debt. God wants you, understand, you to understand what it means to receive mercy. Jesus, he taught us to pray. Do you want to read this with me? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Have you prayed this before? The problem is, is when we think that our spiritual debts, our emotional debts, cannot be canceled and what is old must be paid. It's like that person who lives with a heavy heart for something terrible they did years ago. And they can't forgive themselves. Their guilt causes all sorts of illnesses. In fact, if you go to a hospital today, you will find a great number of people in hospital, not because of real physical diseases, but because of emotional, mental diseases. Because they're carrying guilt and they cannot forgive themselves and that in turn affects their body. You read this in the Spirit of Prophecy. It says, a huge number of people are affected by diseases because of their life, um, life of unforgiveness. Not able to forgive themselves. Not able to believe that God has forgiven them. Not able to forgive somebody else. Here are the two major causes of emotional problems among Christians. Cause one, failure to receive forgiveness. I think that some of us are like the, the servant in the parable. Because he misunderstood the offer the Lord gave him. The Lord canceled his debt. The Lord did far more than he deserved or ever imagined the Lord would do for him. But the servant didn't pay attention to what the Lord did. Because what did the servant ask? Makor to Mason. Give me time. He didn't hear this, the, the master saying, no, I'm canceling it. You're free. He thought, ah, the master is just giving me time. I still have to pay. He did not believe. He was asking for time and he assumed that that's what he's got, an extension of time. And his pride and moral stupidity, he thought he could pay back $18 million, that billion dollars that would take him 200,000 years. He thought he could pay it back. The master was not expecting the money back. But the servant could not believe this wonderful news. He couldn't receive it. He couldn't enjoy it. He couldn't live it. And because of that, there was resentment. There was guilt. There was anxiety working in his life. And because he thought he had to pay, what's the first? Because he thought he still needed to pay back the king, what's the first thing he did when he got out of the palace? Chase his debtors. I got to pay this, so I got to get the money. And he went to those who owned him. Because he thought he still had to pay. Even though the king has said your debts are canceled. Many of us are like that. The good news of grace, the gospel has not. We, under, we hear about it, we believe in it. But it has not reached the level of emotional relationships in our lives. You sometimes, because you don't understand what it means to be free from guilt, what do we do sometimes? We take it on other people. You lose your patience when somebody in your house commits a small mistake. You stop talking to that person that upset you years ago and you still hold grudges. You preach harsh sermons, sermons because you were working out all that fear and unhappiness on other people. 
You know, many Christians are behaving like this. And not because they are evil people, but because they have not understood or be, the depth of their debt and they have not believed the forgiveness that has been given to them. If you are always concerned about what other people do, that means that you have not believed, you have not forgiven yourself. You have not received forgiveness. There is no forgiveness from God unless we learn to forgive our brothers, our sisters, and ourselves. The second biggest problem for, for emotional causes of emotional problem among Christians is the failure to give forgiveness. When we fail to accept and receive God's grace and forgiveness, we also fail to unconditionally love and forgive people. This destroys our relationships. This is how, for example, when you think of your life, when we you think of your significant others, when you think of like, Parents who hurt you when you were growing up. Brothers and sisters who hurt you when you were growing up. Who teased you. Who put you down. That friend who betrayed you. A sweetheart who rejected you. Your marriage. Your, your spouse. Your partner who promised you to all love you. And honor you. And comfort you. But instead caused you pain. What do we feel about that? We feel that those people owe us. Owe us a debt. Look what I've done. They owe me a debt. And because we feel tormented, what do we do? We torment others. Because we hurt, we hurt others. We must make all these people who have hurt you, who have hurt me, I have to make them pay the debt they owe me. We become grievance collectors. Why do we do this? Why? Why do we need to go out and collect the debts? Why do we need to go to per a person and, and say, hey, you did this, 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 and this? It is because we fail to understand that our debt has been fully canceled. Fully. When you understand that you, undeserving me, undeserving, I have been forgiven completely. I don't have to be worried about the way somebody else is behaving. Because I am free. What do you think? Are you like the servant in the story or not? Can I ask you three questions so you can test yourself? Do you not? I hope none of you are like this servant. But just in case, if you may need help from the Holy Spirit, let's ask three questions that maybe um, you may need to ask yourself. Is there someone you resent? Someone you've never left, let off the hook in your life? Okay, think about that. Is there someone right now that you can think of? You never let off the hook. Question number two. Do you ever say to yourself, if only such and such had not happened, I wouldn't be in this mess today? Do you ever say this? If only such and such person had not done this to me, I wouldn't be the way I am today. If you're asking yourself, if you're saying this to yourself, you're keeping debt in someone else's tab, okay? So just, do you ask yourself this question ever? Third question. Do you find yourself reacting against a person because he or she reminds you of someone else? You, have a, you had a, a terrible experience when you were a child, you were abused or something happened to you, and now you meet someone who looks like them, behaves like them, and you mistreat them too? Is that your case? If you said yes, to any of these three questions. Unfortunately, 
you're kind of living like that unforgiving servant. But there's hope. There's a way to get out of this. There's a scriptural way to deal with the hurts from our past. And the main one is this. By believing and trusting that Jesus takes all your sins, all your failures, and all your hurts from the past. And he takes those hurts that happened earlier in your life and he envelops them. He covers them. He wraps them with his loving purpose. And he transforms them into a blessing in your life. That's what the Bible shows. You see this story here? That's what Jesus did for this woman. He didn't deny her hurts. But he took her hurts. And then he covered her with his love. When we look at the cross... We see that there God took the worst injustice, the deepest tragedy that ever happened, and he turned it into the most sublime gift humans could ever receive, the gift of salvation. I'm standing here and breathing because Jesus died for me. I have hope for my future because Jesus died for me. He loved me, he loves me, and he will love me tomorrow. Why? Because he loves me and I don't need to pay him back. I don't need to ever give him back. This is what the Bible teaches. This is the wonderful news. He loves you simply because he loves you. And we don't need to pay back. I'd like to share with you a couple of, um, just a couple of quotes that I really liked from the book Christ's Objects Lesson. The ground of all forgiveness is found in the unmerited love of God. But by our attitude towards others, we show whether we have made that love our own. Wherefore Christ said, For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. We should not think that unless those who have injured us confess their wrong, they are justified in withholding from them our forgiveness. It's not. So we don't have to, we shouldn't think that they have to come to us and confess. And if they don't do it, we are justified to mistreat them. No. It is their part, no doubt, to humble their hearts by repentance and confession. But we are to have a spirit of compassion towards those who have trespassed us against us. Whether or not they confess our, their faults. Forgive somebody even if they don't come and ask for forgiveness. Don't wait for somebody to apologize. Because if you're waiting... You know who you're hurting? You're hurting yourself first. You're the one giving yourself the sentence, put me in jail. Forgive them. Let them go. Let them be. However sorely they may have wounded us, we are not to cherish our grievances and sympathize with ourselves over our injuries. Oh, don't always think, oh, they did this to me, this happened to me. Don't stay in that mindset. Get up, walk forward as somebody who has completely forgiven, being forgiven. As we hope to be pardoned for our offenses against God, we are to pardon all who have done evil to us. If your brethren are, you are to forgive them. When they come to you with confession, you should not say, I do not think they are humble enough. I do not think they feel their confession. What right have you to judge them as if you could read the heart? The word of God says, if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, what are you to do? Forgive them. 
And not only seven times, but as Jesus said, 70 times seven, or as much as it's necessary, just as often God forgives you. Do you remember Joseph? How did Joseph deal with his brothers when he revealed himself to his brothers? Did he try to collect the debt from, the debt from them? Did he try to make them repay? Did he try to make them um, uh, like uh, uh, suffer for what they did to them? Did he punish them? No, look what he said to them. Have no fear, my brothers. Don't worry. Am I in God's place? True enough, you planned evil against me, but God planned it for good to bring about what today's fact, the keeping alive of much people. My friends, we need to be learn to be Seventh-day Adventist Christians who accept because we are accepted, who honor others because we have been given grace, who will be patient with others because we have received the greatest patience because we have been saved. We believe Jesus paid it all. He even paid and canceled what other people have done against you. Listen to this. Jesus has already paid for and he has already canceled what other people did against you. It's paid. Somebody already got punished. We don't need to look for their punishment. Jesus is not adding up your mistakes today and saying, well, I'll give you more time, okay? That's not what forgiveness means to Jesus. When he says forgiveness, you know what he does, kids? He takes that piece of paper where your wrong was written and he burns it. And he takes whatever was left of it and he makes it disappear like, poof, gone. And he says he never remembers it again. And so because he has set us free, we can set others free. Like the Apostle Paul says, let love be your only debt. If you love others, you have done all the law demands. Can you read with me what the... Oh, oh you, do you remember these words of Jesus when he said, Freely you have received, freely give. Do you believe you have been forgiven? Freely, completely? Do you believe it? Do you believe you need more time? No. You don't need more time. Do you believe God forgave your, has forgiven your sins? If yes, then it's time. If God set you free, it's time for you and I to set someone else free. Let them go. And you will find joy, true joy, true relief in your life. May God bless you. If you go out of here and there's somebody that you need to forgive, even if you don't call them, even if it's just within your heart at this stage, let it go. It will be the greatest blessing in your life. God bless. Thank you, my friends, for singing beautifully. Lord, we've sang, we've asked you, and we continue in prayer. I'm begging you for mercy, but not the mercy of more time, rather the mercy of cancel our debts. Forgive us our sins, and more importantly, help us to believe and trust you that you have forgiven us. Help us, Lord, to trust in your love, that you truly love, and when somebody truly loves, they can let go. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for your sacrifice for us. We thank you for setting us free. And that today we can do the same for others. Oh Lord, sometimes because of our human nature, we tend to live like this servant. 
we feel like we have to make other people pay. We feel like we will never be satisfied if somebody doesn't, is not punished or if somebody doesn't do what we want them to do. Sometimes we punish ourselves, Lord. We would like to ask you, Heavenly Father, that you help us to forgive others, that you help us to receive your forgiveness to us. Lord, please, may your love live in us today and every day. Dear Heavenly Father, if there's someone listening to this message today and they want to take hold of your love and take hold of your spirit, but they're going through struggles, they're going through things in their lives, they're going through something that right now they're thinking of that is, is a challenge. And the devil is attacking them and they're feel, feeling emotionally strained. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will heal this person. That you will help this person. That you will encourage this person. We pray that you will let them know that your love is real. That you're with them. And we have nothing to fear. But live a life of freedom, of hope, and of peace. We thank you for this Sabbath. Continue with us as we go home, as we participate in this leaders' meeting. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.